In the void of space, a sharp beep breaks the stillness. It's a distress signal, clear and urgent. Earth's response is swift. A rescue team assembled and dispatched with haste. Their destination lies in the shadow of Arcturus, a bright star in the cosmic tapestry. Their ship, sleek and robust, cleaves through the darkness of space. Inside, the crew moves with purpose. Instruments beep and hum, a symphony of technology in this interstellar journey. The team is diverse, a blend of scientists, engineers and soldiers, each skilled in their field. As the planet looms closer, a hush falls over the crew. The colony ship, a relic from a bygone era of space exploration, was lost to the annals of space. Its sudden reappearance, signalled only by a distress beacon, stirs a mix of excitement and apprehension. Visual on the colony ship, announces one crew member, her eyes locked onto the screen. The ship's exterior tells a story of endurance, scars from micrometeorites, streaks from solar winds, a testament to its long journey through the cosmos. It's both a marvel of human engineering and a silent witness to the unforgiving nature of space. Prepare for landing, the commander orders, his voice steady. The team nods, each member mentally bracing for what lies ahead. Their mission is clear, to investigate, to search for survivors, to uncover the truth behind this enigmatic distress signal. As their own ship descends towards the planet, a world of unknowns awaits them. What happened to the original crew of the colony ship? Why did it disappear? And most importantly, why has it resurfaced now? The rescue team's ship touches down on the alien planet with a gentle thud, stirring up a cloud of fine, reddish dust. The planet's surface is a tapestry of rugged terrain, marked by craggy rocks and sparse vegetation that has a metallic sheen under the alien sun. The team gears up quickly, each member donning a suit designed for extraterrestrial exploration. Helmets click into place, sealing them off from the unknown atmosphere outside. The door slides open with a hiss, revealing the stark landscape of the planet. The team steps out, their boots crunching on the alien soil. They pause for a moment, taking in the sight before them. There it is, the colony ship. It's colossal, dwarfing the team with its sheer size. Its hull, once sleek and gleaming, now bears the scars of its long journey. Dents, scorch marks, and a patina of cosmic dust. It stands silent and imposing, a relic of human ambition now marooned on this distant world. The team approaches cautiously, their suits' lights piercing the dimness that surrounds the ship. The silence is pervasive, broken only by the sound of their footsteps and the occasional static crackle over their comms. This is it, murmurs the engineer, her voice tinged with awe. She runs her gloved hand over the hull, feeling the cold metal, a silent witness to the void of space. The commander surveys the area, his eyes scanning the perimeter. Let's find an entry point. Keep sharp, everyone. We don't know what we're walking into. The team splits into pairs, methodically searching the ship's exterior. The size of the vessel means it's a slow, painstaking process. Every hatch they find is sealed shut, a barrier between them and the secrets that lie within. Finally, the technician, a young man with keen eyes, spots something. Over here, he calls out, pointing to a panel that seems less weathered than the rest. It's a maintenance hatch, overlooked and almost hidden in the shadow of a massive thruster. The team regroups, gathering around the hatch. The engineer pulls out her tools, working quickly to bypass the aged security system. Sparks fly as she welds, cutting through the last barrier to entry. With a final twist of her wrench, the hatch groans open, revealing the dark interior of the colony ship. The team exchanges glances. This is what they've come for, the first step into the unknown. Let's find out what happened here, the commander says stepping into the darkness. His voice is firm, but everyone can hear the underlying question that echoes in their minds. What secrets does this dormant giant hold? What happened to its crew? And what will they find inside?
The team moves forward, lights cutting through the darkness, stepping into the heart of the colony ship and into the heart of the mystery that awaits them. The interior of the colony ship is a labyrinth of corridors and compartments, illuminated only by the beams from the team's suits. The air is stale, heavy with the silence of years. The walls, once sleek and functional, now wear a layer of dust like a shroud. As the team ventures deeper, the beam from the commander's light falls on a figure standing motionless in the corridor. It's a person, perfectly still, staring blankly ahead. The team halts, hands reaching for weapons instinctively. Identify yourself, the commander demands, his voice echoing in the metallic chamber. The figure turns, its movement slow, deliberate. It's a man, his features eerily familiar, like a face from an old photograph. But his eyes are vacant, his expression empty. One by one, more figures emerge from the shadows, each bearing the likeness of a crew member from the original colony ship. They stand before the rescue team, a mirror image of a long-lost crew, yet devoid of any spark of recognition or life. The team is stunned, confusion and suspicion mingling in the air. What the hell is this? mutters the engineer, her eyes scanning the duplicates. The technician steps forward, his voice tinged with disbelief. Are you... are you the crew of this ship? One of the duplicates, a woman with sharp features, responds. Her voice is flat, emotionless. We are the crew, but we do not remember Earth. We do not remember leaving. Questions fly among the team. How? Why? What happened to them? The commander raises a hand, signalling for silence. He addresses the duplicates, his tone firm yet cautious. We need to understand what happened here. Can you show us your ship's logs? The woman nods, turning to lead them through the maze of corridors. The team follows, their footsteps echoing in the empty ship. Each member grapples with the reality before them. A crew of duplicates, human in form but hollow like shells left behind by some unknown process. They reach the ship's command centre, a room filled with dormant screens and consoles. The woman approaches a console, her fingers moving over the controls with a mechanical precision. The screens flicker to life, illuminating the room with a ghostly light. Data streams across the screens, logs, charts, communications. The team gathers around, scanning the information for clues. The records are fragmented, cryptic, offering glimpses into the ship's journey but little in the way of answers. The duplicates stand by, watching the team's every move. Their presence is unnerving, a constant reminder of the mystery that envelops the ship. Why don't you remember? asks the soldier, his eyes fixed on the duplicates. We do not know, replies the woman, her voice devoid of emotion. We woke up here, as we are now. Nothing before that. The commander exchanges a look with his team. This discovery raises more questions than it answers. Who are these duplicates? What happened to the original crew? And most importantly, what does this mean for their mission? The rescue team, surrounded by the enigmatic duplicates, dives into the investigation with a methodical precision. The command center of the colony ship becomes their makeshift base, Screens and consoles casting a cold light over the group. The engineer and the technician lead the effort, sifting through the digital archives of the ship. Data scrolls past rapidly on the screens. Star charts, crew logs, technical readouts. They are searching for any anomaly, any clue that could unravel the mystery of the duplicates. The commander and the soldier maintain a watchful eye over the duplicates, who stand at the edges of the room their presence a silent, constant reminder of the inexplicable situation. Look at this, the engineer calls out, drawing the team's attention to a log entry. The ship's course was altered mid-journey, but there's no record of who did it or why. The technician leans in, analysing the data. And here the life support systems were recalibrated. It's like they were preparing for something different. The crew of the rescue team exchanges glances, each mind racing with possibilities. Sabotage. An unknown entity. The answers seem to slip further away the more they uncover. 
Meanwhile, the duplicates observe silently, their expressions unreadable. They are human in form, but there's an emptiness in their eyes, a lack of the spark that signifies memory, emotion, life as the team knows it. Why can't you remember anything? The soldier asks, his voice edged with frustration. Anything at all that could help us? One of the duplicates, a tall figure with a stoic demeanor, responds. Our memories begin here, on this ship. We have no knowledge of Earth or the journey here. We simply are. The team continues their investigation, delving deeper into the ship's systems. They discover more irregularities, encrypted files, erased data, systems that have been tampered with in ways that defy easy explanation. The technician stumbles upon a particularly baffling piece of information. The bioscanners, he says, his voice laced with disbelief. According to this, the original crew was replaced one by one. But how? And by whom? The question hangs in the air, heavy and unanswered. The commander steps forward, his mind racing with the implications of their findings. We need to keep looking. There's more to this than just a crew being replaced. We need to understand the how and the why. The duplicates continue to watch. Their silence a riddle in itself. Are they victims of some cosmic event? Or are they part of something more sinister? The uncertainty adds a layer of complexity to the team's mission. The team's investigation continues with an increasing sense of urgency. A picture begins to emerge, albeit a fragmented and perplexing one. It's like assembling a puzzle without knowing what the final image should be. The technician, his eyes fixed on the screen, calls the team over. Look at this, he says, pointing to a series of data points. Right before the first instance of a duplicate appearing, the ship's systems experienced a massive surge. It's like something external interfaced with it. The engineer joins in, her brow furrowed as she examines the readings. And these energy signatures don't match anything we use. This isn't just advanced technology. It might be alien. The commander takes in the information, his mind racing. An alien interference could explain the appearance of the duplicates, but it raises far more questions than it answers. Was this an act of aggression, a scientific experiment, or something else entirely? The logs detail a catastrophic event, but the specifics are shrouded in technical jargon and incomplete entries. The ship encountered something in the depths of space, something beyond their understanding or capability to manage. As they piece together the timeline, it becomes apparent that the crew started to change shortly after this event. One by one, each member was replaced by a duplicate, until no original crew members remained. This is beyond anything we've encountered, the engineer mutters. If we're dealing with alien technology, who knows what else we might find on this ship? The duplicates, who have been quietly observing, remain as enigmatic as ever. The team looks at them, seeing them in a new light. Are they simply byproducts of an alien experiment, or something more? The soldier looks at them with a mix of suspicion and wonder. What are you? He asks bluntly. One of the duplicates, the one who seems to be their informal spokesperson, answers calmly, We wish we knew. The team is standing on the edge of a discovery that could alter humanity's understanding of the universe. But with this knowledge comes the realization of how unprepared they are to face the unknown. As the team continues to sift through the data, they find more anomalies, more signs of interference that defy explanation. The ship's navigational records are a maze of impossible routes, and the life support systems show adaptations for physiology that doesn't match human norms. As the investigation into the colony ship's mysteries deepens, a rift forms within the rescue team, fueled by the growing uncertainty and fear surrounding the duplicates. The once unified group begins to fracture under the weight of conflicting beliefs and fears. In the cramped confines of the ship's mess hall, a heated argument breaks out. The engineer, her voice tense with emotion, argues for the human rights of the duplicates. Look at them, she insists, 
gesturing toward the silent figures standing apart from the group. They look human, they act human. We can't just treat them like lab specimens. The soldier, however, is not convinced. His stance is firm, his voice laced with suspicion. We don't know what they are, he counters. For all we know, they could be a part of whatever alien force tampered with this ship. We can't afford to let our guard down. The technician, caught in the middle, tries to mediate. We need more information before we can make any kind of judgment. Let's focus on the facts, not fear. But the fear is already there, creeping into every conversation, every decision. Some team members start avoiding the duplicates, casting wary glances their way. Others try to engage with them, searching for some hint of humanity, some clue to their true nature. The commander watches his team divide into factions, his expression grim. He knows that this division could jeopardize their mission, not to mention their safety. He calls for a meeting, hoping to restore some semblance of unity. In the dim light of the command center, the team gathers. The commander addresses them, his voice steady but carrying an undercurrent of urgency. We can't let ourselves be divided like this. We're in an unprecedented situation, yes, but we need to stick together if we're going to get to the bottom of this. The engineer speaks up, her words passionate. We have a duty to protect life, no matter its form. If these duplicates are sentient, we can't just ignore their rights. The soldier, arms crossed, shakes his head. Our first duty is to the safety of this team and the mission. We can't let sentimentality cloud our judgment. The debate continues with no side willing to back down. Meanwhile, the duplicates watch from a distance, their expressions unreadable. They have become the unwitting catalyst for a conflict that goes beyond the confines of the ship, touching on deeper questions about humanity, identity and the unknown. Tensions within the rescue team reach a boiling point as their differing views on the duplicates turn from heated debates to physical confrontation. The confined space of the colony ship amplifies every argument every raised voice until it becomes impossible to ignore the growing rift. The skirmish breaks out in the ship's main corridor. It starts with a verbal spat between the engineer and the soldier, each adamant in their stance. The engineer accuses the soldier of paranoia while the soldier labels her naive. Their words are sharp, cutting through the stale air of the ship. Other team members quickly take sides. Voices are raised accusations hurled. The technician, trying to play peacemaker, finds himself caught in the middle, his pleas for calm drowned out by the escalating conflict. Suddenly, the argument turns physical. The soldier, driven by fear and frustration, shoves the engineer against a wall. The impact is loud, echoing down the corridor. It's the spark that ignites the powder keg. Fists fly as the team splits into factions each fighting for what they believe is right. The sound of shouts and scuffles fills the ship, a chaotic symphony that speaks of deep-seated fear and uncertainty. The commander tries to intervene to restore order, but his words are lost in the turmoil. The conflict is raw, unfiltered, a manifestation of the psychological strain they've all been under since arriving on this enigmatic ship. Amid the chaos, the duplicates stand apart, watching the scene with their unfathomable expressions. They are the silent observers of a struggle they unwittingly caused, a physical representation of the unknown that has driven the team to this point. As the skirmish continues, the realization dawns on some team members that they are losing themselves in this fight. What started as a mission to uncover the truth has devolved into a battle over fears and beliefs. The technician, bleeding from a cut above his eye, manages to get through to some of his colleagues. Stop! Look at what we're doing to each other! His voice, filled with pain and reason, cuts through the noise. Gradually, the fighting subsides, leaving behind a scene of disarray. Team members are nursing bruises and cuts, their breathing heavy, 
their eyes reflecting a mix of regret and lingering anger. The commander, his authority tested, looks at his team with a mix of disappointment and resolve. This can't happen again, he says firmly. We're here to find answers, not to tear each other apart. The aftermath of the skirmish leaves a tangible unease aboard the colony ship. Bruises and strained relationships serve as reminders of the conflict. However, amidst this tension, a realization dawns on both the rescue team and the duplicates. Their division only deepens the mystery surrounding them. It's this understanding that leads to the formation of a fragile yet crucial alliance. The commander, taking the lead, addresses both his team and the duplicates. His voice carries a blend of authority and conciliation. We've let fear and suspicion get the best of us, he admits. But it's clear we need each other to figure out what happened here. The spokesperson for the duplicates, a figure who has shown a consistent calmness, nods in agreement. Our existence is as much a mystery to us as it is to you. We will cooperate in your investigation. The engineer, still nursing a bruise from the skirmish, steps forward. Her voice is softer now, but her resolve is firm. There are things we can learn from each other. We have the technical expertise, but you, you might have insights we're missing. This proposition of working together is met with mixed reactions. The soldier remains skeptical, his trust hard to win back. The technician, however, sees this as a necessary step, a way to bridge the gap between the unknown and the known. In this newfound alliance, the team and the duplicates start to share information and perspectives. The duplicates lead them to parts of the ship the team hadn't accessed, revealing living quarters and personal effects that offer a glimpse into the lives of the original crew. The technician and one of the duplicates working side by side manage to unlock a sealed section of the ship's database. It contains detailed logs and personal diaries, potentially holding key information about the events leading up to the creation of the duplicates. Meanwhile, the engineer and another duplicate delve into the ship's engineering systems, uncovering modifications that were made post-incident. These alterations seem to cater to different biological needs, suggesting that the duplicates, while human in appearance, might have different physiological requirements. Despite the progress, the Alliance is not without its challenges. Mistrust still simmers beneath the surface, and every new discovery is scrutinized for potential threats. The soldier, always on alert, keeps a watchful eye on the interactions, ready to intervene at the first sign of trouble. The commander, seeing the delicate balance of this alliance, works to maintain a level of diplomacy and order. He knows that this cooperation is their best chance at uncovering the truth, but he also recognizes the fragility of the situation. The uneasy alliance between the rescue team and the duplicates bears fruit when they stumble upon a hidden chamber within the colony ship, a discovery that changes the course of their investigation. It begins with the technician and a duplicate poring over the newly accessed ship's database. A schematic of the ship reveals an unaccounted for space, a section hidden behind a series of sealed bulkheads. The engineer, intrigued by this anomaly, organizes a team to investigate. They navigate the labyrinthine corridors of the ship, following the schematic like a treasure map. The journey is tense, each member aware that they're venturing into the unknown. They arrive at a nondescript section of the ship. The wall here looks like any other, but the engineer's instruments reveal something different. There's a room behind this, she announces, her voice tinged with excitement and apprehension. Using a combination of tools and brute force, the team manages to pry open the bulkhead. Behind it lies a chamber, starkly different from the rest of the ship. It's alien not just unfamiliar, but fundamentally other. The chamber is spherical, with walls that pulsate gently with a soft iridescent light. The air is charged, as if the room itself is alive. The team steps inside, their light superfluous in the chamber's ethereal glow. In the center of the room stands a structure that defies easy description, 
It's a console of sorts, but unlike any technology they've seen. It's organic in appearance, with smooth flowing lines and surfaces that seem to respond to their presence. The duplicates move around the chamber with a sense of reverence. One of them approaches the console, their hand hovering over its surface. The console reacts, lighting up with intricate patterns that dance across its structure. The soldier, ever cautious, raises an alarm. We don't know what this is. It could be dangerous. The commander, however, is captivated by the discovery. This could be the key to understanding everything. The duplicates, the ship's journey, the interference we've detected. They stand at the threshold of something monumental. A secret locked away in the heart of the colony ship. The room feels like a bridge between worlds, their known reality and something far beyond human comprehension. The technician, his curiosity overcoming his caution, starts to interface with the console, assisted by the duplicates. They work in tandem, deciphering the alien symbols and inputs. The hidden chamber within the colony ship becomes the focal point of an extraordinary discovery. At the heart of the chamber is a device, unlike anything the rescue team or the duplicates have ever seen. It's a complex structure, pulsing with a rhythmical light, almost as if it's breathing. The technician, aided by a duplicate, cautiously interacts with the device. As he touches its surface, a sudden burst of light envelops the room, and a torrent of images floods the minds of everyone present. These are not mere pictures, they are vivid, immersive memories, experiences from a civilization far beyond human understanding. The team and the duplicates alike are caught in the grip of this shared vision, unable to look away. They see a planet, breathtaking in its beauty, with sprawling cities that defy the laws of physics. The architecture is both organic and geometric, harmoniously blended. This is a civilization that has mastered the balance between technology and nature. But this world is dying. The visions convey a sense of urgency, a desperation. The planet's sun is unstable, threatening to engulf their world in a supernova. The scenes shift to show the inhabitants' efforts to save their species. They are a race of beings with advanced technology, but even they cannot stop the inevitable destruction of their sun. In their search for salvation, they find the colony ship adrift in the cosmos, a vessel from a less advanced civilization, humanity. The rescue team and the duplicates watch as these beings enact a plan born of desperation. They merge their essence with the human crew, creating the duplicates as vessels to carry on their legacy. The images are overwhelming, filled with emotions that are both alien and achingly familiar, fear, hope, loss. The team is left reeling as the flood of memories subsides, the light from the device dimming to a gentle pulse. The room is silent in the aftermath, each person processing the revelation. The duplicates, now with a newfound understanding of their origin, look around with a sense of clarity. They are not just mirrors of the humans they were modelled after. They are the legacy of a lost civilization, carrying the hopes of a species that faced extinction. The commander, his mind racing with the implications of this discovery, breaks the silence. This changes everything. You're not just duplicates, you're survivors of a civilization that's no more. And this ship, it's more than a colony vessel. It's a lifeboat. The soldier, his previous suspicions now tempered with understanding, looks at the duplicates with a new perspective. We were wrong about you. This, your existence, it's not an act of aggression. It's an act of survival. The engineer, her eyes wide with a mix of shock and wonder, steps forward. Your people merged with ours to survive. But in doing so, they gave us a gift, a chance to learn to grow beyond what we thought possible. In the wake of the revelations unearthed in the hidden chamber, the team is forced to confront a new reality. The duplicates, once thought to be mere replicas of the human crew, are in fact the last remnants of an advanced alien race. 
This realization sends shockwaves through the already fragile alliance as fear, awe and uncertainty coalesce into a volatile mix of emotions. The rescue team, now aware of the true nature of the duplicates, struggles to reconcile this knowledge with their previous perceptions. The duplicates are not human. They are survivors of a desperate act of preservation by an alien species facing extinction. The engineer, always empathetic, is fascinated by the depth and complexity of what the duplicates represent. They're not just copies. They're a merger of two species, an incredible feat of survival against impossible odds, she says. However, the soldier's reaction is more guarded, his fear and suspicion reignited by the alien aspect of the duplicates. This changes the stakes, he argues. They may look human, but they're not. We can't predict what they might do, what their real intentions are. The commander, tasked with maintaining order and focus, finds himself at a crossroads. The mission's objective has shifted from rescue to something far more complex and profound. We need to approach this with caution, he cautions. But we also can't lose sight of the fact that these beings, these duplicates, are sentient. They deserve our respect, not our fear. The duplicates, for their part, are coming to terms with their own identity. They grapple with the knowledge that they are the bearers of an alien legacy, merged with the human crew in a bid to preserve their species. This revelation gives them a sense of purpose, but also a deep sense of loss for a home and a culture they never knew. The technician, trying to bridge the gap, reminds the team of the shared humanity that still exists within the duplicates. They may have originated from another world, but their experiences, their existence on this ship, that's been shaped by human influences, we can't discount that. Despite the fractures in their relationship, the team realizes they must continue working together to uncover the full story of the colony ship and the fate of the original crew. The duplicates, with their newfound understanding of their origins, are key to piecing together the remaining mysteries. The fragile balance aboard the colony ship is further disrupted when a communication from Earth's command arrives, casting a new shadow over the team's mission. The message is clear and unequivocal. The rescue team is to return with the duplicates for study. This ultimatum from Earth sparks a moral and ethical debate among the team members, tearing at the seams of their already strained alliance. The commander, upon receiving the message, calls a meeting in the ship's common area. Command wants the duplicates brought back for analysis. They believe this could be a significant scientific breakthrough. The engineer reacts with immediate disapproval, her voice laced with emotion. They're sentient beings, not lab rats. It's unethical to treat them like specimens for dissection. We can't just hand them over. The technician, always the voice of reason, tries to see both sides. It's a tough call. On one hand, the scientific knowledge we could gain is immense. But at what cost? Do we have the right to make decisions for the duplicates? The soldier, pragmatic as ever, weighs in. It's not just about ethics. Think about the security implications. We don't fully understand what they are capable of. Earth's command has a point in wanting to study them. The conversation grows heated as they grapple with the implications of the ultimatum. The idea of treating the duplicates as mere subjects for study conflicts with the understanding they have developed about their nature and origins. Meanwhile, the duplicates themselves are grappling with the reality of their situation. The spokesperson among them addresses the team. We understand your dilemma, but we ask you to see us as partners, not as objects of curiosity. We have a right to determine our own future. The commander, feeling the weight of responsibility, realizes the decision won't be easy. We need to consider all factors. This is about more than just following orders. It's about what we stand for as explorers, as humans. After much deliberation and emotional debate, the rescue team reaches a difficult decision. In an effort to honor both the directives from Earth and their own moral compass, they agree to split into two groups. Half the team will return to Earth with the duplicates, adhering to the command's ultimatum. 
The other half will remain on the colony ship to further explore the alien technology and gather more information about the origins and purpose of the duplicates. The atmosphere is heavy as the team prepares for the departure. The commander who has chosen to return to Earth oversees the preparations. He approaches the duplicates, his expression solemn. We're doing what we think is best, he explains. This way, we can protect your interests while also fulfilling our obligations to Earth. The spokesperson for the duplicates nods in understanding, though their eyes betray a hint of apprehension. We trust you will advocate for us, they reply. We hope for a future where our existence is respected and understood. The engineer, who has decided to stay behind, is busy checking the equipment they need to continue their investigation. Her goodbyes are brief, but meaningful, especially to the technician, who will be returning to Earth. Take care of them, she says, her voice laced with concern. The technician nods, his expression resolute. We'll make sure they're treated fairly and we'll be back with reinforcements as soon as we can. The soldier, also returning to Earth, shares a quiet moment with the commander. I still have my reservations, he admits, but I understand why we're doing this. Let's just hope it works out for the best. Goodbyes are exchanged, some in words, others in silent nods and handshakes. The team, once united in their mission, now finds themselves divided, each group with a different purpose but still connected by their shared experience and the uncertainties that lie ahead. The departure is a somber affair. As the ship carrying the commander, the technician, the soldier and the duplicates prepares to leave, those staying behind gather to watch. The ship's engines ignite, casting a bright glow against the backdrop of the alien planet. The engineer, along with the remaining team members, watches the ship ascend into the starry expanse, feeling a complex mix of emotions. There's a sense of loss, but also a determination to continue their work. The journey back to Earth is marked by a pervasive tension that hangs over the ship like a shroud. Inside, the team members who have chosen to return with the duplicates are caught in a web of complex emotions and ethical considerations. The duplicates, now aware of their uncertain fate upon reaching Earth, exhibit a wide array of emotions that are startlingly human. There is fear in the eyes of some, a quiet resignation in others, and a sense of curiosity in a few. They converse among themselves in low tones, their voices a mixture of their own, and the remnants of the human crew they were modelled after. The soldier, tasked with ensuring the safety of the mission, watches the duplicates closely. His previous suspicions have given way to a more protective stance, but he remains vigilant, aware of the unpredictability of the situation. The technician, who has formed a kind of bond with the duplicates through their shared work on the ship, finds himself in a moral quandary. He is torn between the excitement of the scientific discovery the duplicates represent and the guilt of treating sentient beings as research subjects. We're doing the right thing, aren't we? He questions the commander, seeking reassurance. The commander, who carries the weight of the decision, maintains a stoic exterior, but inside he is riddled with doubts. Our job was to rescue and understand, he says. But now, it feels like we're betraying a fundamental principle of exploration, to do no harm. Conversations on the ship are subdued, with team members and duplicates alike lost in their thoughts. The journey, once a triumphant return mission, now feels more like a somber procession towards an unknown future. As Earth grows larger in the ship's viewports, the reality of what awaits them becomes more pressing. The duplicates look at the blue planet with a mix of wonder and apprehension. For some, it's a symbol of hope, a new beginning. For others, it's a reminder of their lost world and the uncertainty of their existence. The duplicates, in a show of unity, gather to speak with the commander. We understand our presence raises many questions, their spokesperson says. But we ask for a chance to prove that we can coexist, that we can be a part of your world without fear. The commander nods 
touched by their plea. I'll do everything in my power to ensure you're treated with the respect and dignity you deserve, he promises. The ship carrying the rescue team and the duplicates approaches Earth. The blue and green of the planet dominates the viewport, a symbol of homecoming. But this feeling of nearing the end of their journey is abruptly shattered by an unforeseen and shocking development. Without warning, the duplicates who until now had seemed resigned to their fate spring into action with a coordinated and precise movement. They move with a speed and efficiency that catches the team completely off guard. The commander, caught by surprise, tries to regain control of the situation. What's happening? He demands, as the duplicates expertly manipulate the ship's controls, locking out the team's access. The spokesperson for the duplicates, who had been the voice of peace and understanding, turns to the commander with a look that is both apologetic and resolute. We are sorry, they say, but our mission was never just about survival. We are the vanguard of our civilization, tasked with ensuring its continuation. Earth is to be our new home, and you, its first inhabitants, are to be the first of our new converts. The revelation hits the team like a physical blow. The mission, which they had believed was a rescue operation, was in fact the beginning of an invasion. The duplicates, far from being mere survivors, are the advance party of an alien species intent on colonizing Earth. The soldier, reacting quickly, tries to confront the duplicates, but they are prepared for this. They restrain him with ease, their strength and agility far surpassing his expectations. The technician, horrified, realizes the extent of their deception. You used us, he says, his voice a mix of anger and betrayal. We trusted you, and you used that against us. The duplicates, their demeanor now completely changed, work efficiently to set the ship on a course that will bring them into a strategic orbit around Earth. Their actions are methodical, their focus absolute. As the commander watches helplessly, he understands the full gravity of their situation. The duplicates, with their advanced knowledge and capabilities, pose a significant threat to Earth. The team, unwittingly, has brought this danger to their doorstep. In a final twist of fate, the ship's communication systems are disabled by the duplicates, cutting off any chance of warning Earth about the impending threat. The team is left to grapple with the reality of their failure and the role they played in bringing this danger to their home planet. As Earth looms closer, now not a symbol of safety but of imminent danger, the team faces the consequences of their actions. The rescue mission has turned into a nightmare scenario, with Earth's fate hanging in the balance. 